happens sometimes. All right, so fingers crossed everything's all good. Um, everyone's ready to go. Yep, yeah, they are. That's great. And the first map, Light Random. We've actually got ourselves a double, possibly double Arabia, um, though actually no, this isn't double Arabia. Uh, it's a double double TC map. Do you have any idea what map this might be out of the Light Random pack? I was about to say double migration, but then I saw, Yeah. like, is that ice? I have no, um, no oh, ice, no snow patch. Oh, shallows here. Uh, but yeah, we've yeah. got two TCs, which this is going to be a fun game, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, any sort of map in the light random pack that has the two TC start can always lead to some pretty fun games. Um, so let's actually go over who we've got playing here. Obviously, we're currently spectating VN Milo. He is part of Team Vikingos Nomades, VN. Uh, his teammates are in blue. We have Vien Confer. He's off to the left of the map over here. And uh, we have in grey Vien Millen Colin. I believe that's right. At least you tried. I tried. How would you pronounce yeah. that name? Yeah, it was fine. Millen Colin. Yeah, I don't want to Millen try. Colin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they make up the team Viking Gus Nomades, obviously. And uh, their average rating uh, currently, based off of the random map overall ratings, is 1918. So 1918. Uh, which is pretty high in comparison to the other team, who is made up of the Prophet, the Ofwu, and Green. <laughs> yeah. They are three. Um, who obviously we cannot see because we're not spectating those guys. We will be spectating those in the next game. They are Coco Joe's Naked Camels, CJNC, um, which I don't know about you, but I think that is the best name of any team in this tournament so far. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And uh, their average rating is uh, 1537, so 1537. Um, so obviously there's a big rating gap there, and I think, you know, going into this game, VN are certainly going to be the favourites to win it. Yeah, I think so too. There's, there's very little doubt about that. Um, but anyway, let's have a look at the map and have a look at exactly what these players have to start with. So obviously, two TCs to start. Um, that's quite a big deal. Obviously, uh, at the very, very start, you can't um, get up to the feudal age at a, at a, you know, a fast time because obviously you have got uh, to produce villagers from both TCs. The question is, do you want to keep both TCs running continually uh, and delay your feudal time, or do you want to click up to feudal faster by leaving one of the town centers idle? Uh, so yeah, I think if I'm informed correctly, you will have like twice the standard resources, so. Um, basically, you should be able to upgrade to fuel age, like in a reasonable time. But I think most most players do, like do a fast castle on on double TC. Yeah, because obviously you know stuff like that. when they get up to the feudal age, they've got so many villagers by that stage because obviously they've had two town centers from the start. Yeah, uh, going exactly. for a, a very fast castle um, can be the case because by the time you've reached the feudal age, you've already got more than enough resources to advance up to castle. Uh, but yeah. I think the real challenge here is the micromanagement because obviously players are used to doing their standard dark age start with just one TC. Uh, when yeah. it, when they're thrown into a double TC situation like this, um, it's very sort of like oh I I'm thrown off guard. I've got to suddenly split everything. It's not just six villages to wood anymore. Uh, sorry, six yeah. villages to food, four to wood. It's everything's doubled. But uh, hopefully, this should be an interesting game. We'll just have a, a bit more look at the map. Obviously, uh, starting island here with the basic starting resources, a little bit of gold, um, but only in small patches. Obviously, we've got a little bit of stone here as well. Uh, two berry bush patches and two deer patches, as well as a little bit of wood, but not too much. Uh, we can see Milo already building a dock right here, and so I think Vienna are likely to be trying to take the water control uh, in, in this game. At least trying. I don't. I'm not sure yet, but I think that's the map where lots of resources are in the middle. Uh huh. It, it's don't know the name looks exactly. At the moment. Um, yeah, we can see gold. Like two, three big gold pies already. Four. I can yeah. count four. Um, yeah, there is a lot. I'm not sure if there's much fishing. Obviously, we can see a few shore fish here. Not sure if maybe back here in the, in the far back corner um, there'll be any big fish or not. But well, I think, I think if I'm if I remember correctly, it's not. That much fish. No. Fish inside the water, so. 
Oh, no, there is one big fish there, so Milo actually getting some fish um, right early on. So uh, that's pretty going to be good for him. He's going to get a little bit of extra food from that, and you know, having fishing ships out as well as these two TCs to start, going to give him a, a really big economy by the time he reaches feudal and even castle. Yeah. So I'm hoping also, that we'll have a pretty fast-paced game here. Yeah. Also, very interesting civilizations with with Mongols, Chinese, and and Mayans. So yeah. should be really good. Yeah, um, I think I forgot to mention this already. Obviously, the uh, yeah. teams are mirrored over. Um, Milo here, of course, playing as Mongols. Um, but yeah, like three pretty much archer civs. So that should be fairly interesting as well. Um, you know, when it gets later on, I I love seeing archer civs play because obviously, well, I don't know. I just find watching archers a little bit more interesting. <laughs> personal opinion there. Yeah, I think we have a really nice, really nice set of civilizations. Especially Mongols, I think it's really useful on, on maps like like this, like Light Random, where you need to scout and sign out your map really quickly. So yeah, the definitely. scout bonus comes in really handy, Obviously. especially when you got like two scouts, two <laughs> yeah, scouts going. Of course, I mean we could probably attribute uh, Milo's highest score here at the moment, pretty much down to his scouting. And I imagine these guys are either on Skype or communicating in some way. So having these two scouts here with the extra line of sight as Mongols, obviously going to be a really big help. Um, yeah. But Obviously, having the double array, oh, sorry, not double array, but the double TC start and double scouts at the start, um, it can actually lead to some interesting laming as well. Um, if all of the players decide to group their scouts up, you've suddenly got six scouts on the map. And uh, yeah. if you head over to the enemy's base with six scouts, um, you know, while you're in the Dark Age, you could be a, you know, a real pain, take out a lot of their villagers. Agree. But I don't know if, well, it doesn't seem like at this stage either yes. any of them are actually going to be. Um, Going for any cheese here with the with that. Well, you can do two things with the scout. You, well, three things basically. You can team up and and combine your forces with with your teammates, or you can can like Miller's doing right now, move the scouts together. So uh -huh. you can pick up villagers like on his own, or you can split them and get like maximum scouting information. And personally, I I agree with with Miller's decision to keep these scouts together. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, but obviously they're finding the Ofwu, and uh, there we go, we see Ofwu taking his hunt there, and if we compare that to what Milo, well, what stage Milo is at right now, Milo has already taken all of his hunt, he's uh, taking his berries, and I believe, first up to the Feudal Age as well, yes. Uh, as we can see, his uh, resource is getting pretty high already, he'll be likely to click up to Castle straight away, just waiting to see those two feudal buildings, uh, we see the market going down, and uh, we'll see, I, I think probably going with a blacksmith, Yeah. somewhere else, oh, there we go, nice little Not villager even got a barrack pick there. There, so. yep. Nice little villager pick um, from Milo with his scouts, just obviously in off with his base, and as I was saying, obviously having the double scouts can lead to some early harassment. Now of course he's up to the feudal age, he's got the plus two attack on his scouts, he can be a real pain uh, yeah. in off with his base there. And uh, we're about to, I think we'll see him click up to Gassel really soon actually, um, and obviously it's going to be a nice time as well. Blacksmith Probably will buy some food, I, I guess. Yeah, that's what he did. Yeah, there we go. And he'll click up in just a moment. And yeah, so once he gets up to Castle, uh, we could see some, well, we could see some galleys coming out because I think, you know, trying to take control of the water a little bit, I know there's not a lot of water on the map, but it gives you a lot of scouting. Um, you can obviously harass your opponent's base from the water as well as you know, water all the way around and wood near yeah. the shore. Um, could be a good idea to do that, but I think what they'll probably try and do first is try and take the center, possibly if they're fast up to castle, uh, get some exactly. TCs down in the center of the map quickly while they can. Uh, there we go, we see Melo moving his scouts back to the center now. That could be an indication that he's gonna get some TCs up there fairly soon once he gets up to the castle age. Yeah, that's definitely the way to go forward. Yeah. Just just two gold and stone piles each. Uh, definitely. Not enough. Uh, if we have a look at the chat log we can see that Ofwu and Confa have both upgraded to feudal pretty much at the same time. So that is well, obviously they're quite far behind in comparison uh, right now, but I can hear some attacks. Where is that coming from? There we go. Um, Mayans, Eagle Warriors coming in. Yeah. Just probably trying to pick up a villager here, but I don't know whether he's going to be successful with that or not. It's also an interesting aspect, uh, I, I think. And we have a Mongol pocket on the one side and Mayans on the other side, so could see some knights, but. Miller opted for for Blacks of Market, so 
won't happen anytime soon, I guess. Yeah, obviously, if he was planning on making knights straight away, he would have gone, well, had his blacksmith, well, sorry, not blacksmith, his barracks and stable up by now. Yeah. Uh, exactly. But it looks like he's moving some villagers out right now towards the centre of the map. It could very well be the case that he just puts TCs down straight away in the centre and starts to secure that area. Yeah. Obviously, once you get up to the castle age, um, putting your TC down, TCs down there, going to be quite hard for your opponent to really do much uh, once they actually sort of get in rage. Um, the chat is now working, by the way. <laughs> that's great. Uh, obviously, yeah, we, are, we were 22 minutes delayed, but that's because we had to delay the start due to resolutions and all that stuff. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> little fight with the scouts right there. Milo, obviously, uh, going to win that one, I think. Oh, no, he's not, actually. Profit with... Uh, yeah, low on, low on HP with both the scouts, so... But that's not really so much of a problem to him now. He's scouted up the centre of the map. He knows where he's going to put his TCs down. Obviously, trying to secure the gold here, that's going to be quite an important thing for them. And yeah. possibly... Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> Using his villagers to get in there, and suddenly Prophet's finding himself the one being re well, retreating. Yeah. But obviously, scouts at this stage, just a couple of scouts, not really too much of a big deal. Um, checking quickly the chat, Offwoo's just gone up to the Castle Age, um, Grey has gone up to the Castle Age as well. Everyone else is still feudal, as far as I can tell. And uh, obviously we don't know what's going on on the other areas of the map because we have no cartography. I mean, he could research it, but it's really just a waste of food and gold at this stage of the game if they're communicating yeah. you know, via Skype or whatever. Um, so we'll try and get an idea of what the other players are doing. Um, Confer potentially here could be attacking already, um, just based on his score being slightly higher. Can't really say for sure, however, though. Yeah, it could be. Uh, obviously, third town centre going down in the centre for men. Can't see anything from the other guys yet. Which the is the center. fourth? Uh, oh, of course, the fourth. Yeah. Yes, because they started with two already. Start. Yeah. I mean, he could have just gone down with just the one, and he would have been, you know, in a good situation. But obviously, opting to go for the fourth anyway. Um, yeah. Which I don't think that's a bad decision at all. Um, he's also starting to save up for a castle right now as well, taking some stone. So I mean, we could see him even go pretty much fast imperial here. He's got the gold already, he's not too far off the food, and start going yeah. with mangonels. Uh, sorry, not mangonels, mangadai even. <laughs> but um, in the centre of the map now, stable siege workshop monastery. Yeah, putting lots of stuff down. Uh, I can't actually see any relics on this map, so monastery perhaps just to protect from any raiding knights that might come in a little later on. Um, well, I think there are, there are a few relics in the middle, if I remember correctly. I can see one. Um, uh, can you? Right I next, can't right next to his double TC oh, on the right side. I see, I see, yeah. Yeah, and we can also see, see the grey right there. Right there. Well. Yeah. Okay, yes. so yeah, he probably he might collect up the relics, but he might make some monks to defend. It's no. ranked at a 5th TC right now. Not really sure what his plan with that is, but uh, as I said before, going really fast Imperial here, and obviously you can do that on this map, and uh, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised at all if you just go straight for Mangadai, to be honest with you. There's the castle going down on the front, and uh, yeah. you know, the power... Oh! Oh, nice! Ofwu already got a castle there, and that's obviously going to be a little bit annoying for... Really for nice. <laughs> yeah. Obviously trying to take some of the map control here. Uh, but obviously, here, Milo just going to build his castle a little bit further behind. Not really a lot that two plumed archers can do, to be honest with you. Um, maybe you're able to pick off a couple of villagers, but obviously with these TCs here, Milo's going to be fairly safe inside of there. Yeah. And actually, quite a few plumed archers from Ofwu. I'm wondering if he can do anything with this. I mean, if he adds in some mangonels or something, he could start to take out some of these buildings. But it's pretty much solid now that Milo's going to get this castle up. And uh, of course, once he gets the castle, he's going to start making those mangadai. I think the problem problem for, for Purple will, will be a Milo's Imperial Age in a second. I think he's nowhere near advancing Purple. Yeah, of course. And once he just, that just advanced a uh, minute 17, so. I yeah. think it might be a bit too late to do anything, really. Of course, and uh, once this castle is up as well, of course, Milo is going to be able to start making some yeah. trebuchets, and that castle from Ofwu is just not going to stay up very long at all. Um, Agree. Of course, with the castle here also, he's not going to be able to do much with those plumed archers at all. Uh, Ofwu has, sorry, not Ofwu, Green here, just upgraded to the castle age now. And as you can see, with some galleys on the water here, that he's attempted to take the water a little bit. Um, fire ship coming in from Milo, and he'll probably be able to clear that up pretty quickly. Yeah. Not too much of a problem there at all. And there we go, Mangadai is starting to be queued up right now. And I imagine he's just getting, he got the stable up there so that he could do the upgrades really quickly. Um, 
Oh, they're saying that. No upgrades at all just yet. I thought he would be trying to get those upgrades on before he got up to the Imperial Age. Yeah, me too. Obviously, the Medi even... requires a lot of upgrades to be really effective. Um, yeah. But once those upgrades are done, it's you know makes a makes it really a powerful unit. Yeah, but that's a trap we were talking about uh, earlier. So. Yeah. Pervis Castle most likely going down very soon. We can yeah. see rats there too. I can see a villager. Uh, so I don't see that. I right next to that castle, you can see. Oh right, see yeah, village. I see that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I really, I cannot see those uh, castles staying up for long at all. Um, you see a town centre there from Prophet as well. Uh, but obviously these trebuchets already deploying. Milo can see all. He's uh, should be there. We go researching bloodlines right now. Starting to upgrade his Mangadai at the blacksmith with the Bodkin Arrow research. Yeah. And it really is, I think, now just a matter of time till this goes down and Milo can start to push his way through. We still have no idea exactly what uh, Grey and Blue are doing. Uh, I imagine they are probably somewhere along the lines of launching attacks at the moment. I'm guessing they're on the water at some some area here, because obviously Grey pinging the water right there. Um, we should probably... Inc <laughs> well, I don't really want to encourage the players to get cartography if they don't need it, but obviously it does help us a lot. <laughs> yeah, and I really don't know why, 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 why the Prophet put that TC down there. I think it was really... Really strange decision, yeah, especially uh, yeah. since you should have should have realized that that's a castle uh, uh -huh. and Melo eventually in privilege. Yeah. Oh, and also that castle from Afu seems like just just put down that castle, uh, which will go down straight away. Exactly, there's one down trapped. right now. Rams coming yeah. in, and uh, I think he probably upgrade to Capt Ram pretty soon as well. Um, but now, obviously, of course, making those Mangadai as well, and he's gonna have enough for another castle in just a moment's time. Yeah. Uh, obviously, of course, already plus two done on those, uh, plus one defense, and he, well, he doesn't have a university yet, so that's for sure. Finally, getting cartography, so we can have a look what the other guys are doing. We see Confer down here on the water, trying to take some water control in this corner. Uh, looks like he's succeeding over there. Um, I do know the Prophet, probably better player on water than on land. That is my knowledge of him. Um, what else can we see? Uh, big Navy from Grey here as well, trying to batter down these walls from Green. Possibly he, he might go in there with an attack. Oh, and also, uh, actually, Cavalry Archers from, from player 3 yeah, uh, on Milo. Yeah, right there, yeah. Um, I don't know how many he's going to be able to do, what he's actually going to be able to do there. Interesting choice that he made uh, the Cavalry Archer. Of course, uh, he probably would have been better off going for knights, but obviously, you know, personal preference. Uh, obviously, if you go for cavalry archers, get those upgrades already, then um, you, you're ready to make Mangadai with those upgrades. Yeah, but you can always, always up for for crossbows. I think that would be a, would be yeah. a better decision. As well, yeah. Um, yeah. Elite Mangadai research being done. Meanwhile, these castles are going down. There's no doubt about it. Uh, these two trebuchets just been battering away at that for quite some time. And it looks like VN's team going to be taking a really good hold of the centre. And you know, I think once the centre area is controlled by one team or the other, um, it really is just a matter of time then until the game is won or lost. Uh, well, won for that team. Even. Well, I, I saw saw games where uh, the team had lost the middle. Could hold up for quite some time, especially if you've got trade going, but yeah. I think this game is looking pretty, pretty worn right now. Yeah, of course. Won't talk well, too early, but. Even yeah. If you, you know, if you lose the center, you've still got the flanks as well, which can be walled off, but if they're not walled, if the walls get broken down, you've just, you know, another hole into your base. Um, yeah. So, you know, being stranded on your island with enemies all around, you're not going to last long at all. More castles from Ofu in the center right here, but these Mangadai's just, you know, absolutely cutting through these villages right here and uh, Milo is really going to start to push forwards and, and take this area pretty much no doubt about it yeah oh uh, interesting here from uh, Grey on the right hand side not oh yeah he, he broke through the walls there he's throwing a castle down right outside of Greenstown Centre and I don't even know if he's realised he must have seen that. It's clearly in range of his TC, but that castle can yeah. go up outside of his TC. Green, though, sending some cavalry archer through, which is you know, interesting. He might be able to do some damage with that, but I think uh, Grey here going to quickly garrison inside that TC and not let him do so much. And Grey is just castle rushing him, which is always a fun strategy to see. I think the problem right now is just that Miller's team is basically all in period age and. Yeah, of course. Uh, the other and Ufu and Prophet. Still like, completely castle. 
Yeah, Prophet, um, yeah. he's got a reasonable navy. I mean, he could do some damage from the water here. But yeah, but he lost like 800,000 villagers <laughs> yeah, in the center, in the center <laughs> right yeah. now to Mango Dai, so. Over here. Absolute massacre. You know, with this yeah. many villagers lost, it's, it's going to be hard to get your economy back on track whilst making a military at the same time. Uh, they're pretty much surrounded at this yeah. stage. Uh, I was expect that? expecting expecting some kind of sling uh, once I saw um, like that castle, that offensive castle from purple. Maybe maybe sling the main guy, do lots of plumed archers and rush the middle, but yeah. I think it was just too late to do anything, uh, basically. It was just Absolutely. upgrading to castle age, min minute 7, yeah. late minute 17, so... Exactly, these villagers just yeah. being massacred on the left side there. Um, but as I was saying, you know, Prophet's got a reasonable navy here. He's actually going to get quite a lot of villagers from Milo at least here, and, and from Blue as well. Yeah. Um, Confer now, of course, already into the Imperial Age. He's got his galleon upgrades and these guys saying. Yeah, I'm death the GG. <laughs> there we go. But a nice fast game for us, 31 minutes and just look, the map pretty much covered already with everything. Um good stuff. Yeah. Uh, I really do like the double um sorry, the double T C start. Always a lot of fun. Yeah, quite fun. And also we can see that even Milo got some problems dealing dealing with that double stuff, getting housed quite quite often in the yeah, beginning. So of course.